Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Dives. Say a very special unboxing for you. Something that came in the mail. Looks like it's from the Griffin Company in Canada. Well, let's take a look. See what this is. Today I'm opening up with my Wii Makani Limited Edition. It's got the um, fire anodized titanium clip and backspacer and uh, pivot collar. Pretty nice little knife. Love the action on this thing. Beautiful. All right. Let's see here. I think that's it. Just a package. All right, no box. So here we are at the Griffin Company. Check this box out. Griffin Company. Let's see, does it have anything on here? Designed in, uh, by Keith Griffin and manufactured by Best Tech. Okay, so this is a Best Tech knife. All right. So let's take a look. All right, in here we have some stickers. Oh, I like stickers. Always very cool about that. So there's two, yeah, two separate stickers. Oh, cool going to add these to my list as you can already probably tell you know what that is and so here's our certificate coa this is the f scout the scout f3 specs and this is the right handed and this is the titanium one and over here blade material the m390 light stone washed for the blade finish oh, i thought i got the uh hmm, so i got a belt set but that's okay titanium and light stone wash for the handle. All right. Oh, no, no, that's right. This is the one I got. Yeah, so I got the stone wash for this one. I think I have another knife. Oh, and a little silk it back in. There we go. All right, so we'll just put that in here for now. Cool little patch goes on top of there. That's nice. You can attach that to your bag or something, but it's kind of a cool little pouch. This is a really nice pouch. Double zippered on both sides with little string attachments. I like that a lot. Kind of cool. All right, here we go. All right, so in here we have some extra hardware and washers. That's nice. Extra pivot. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, full washers and everything. Nice. A nice little micro cloth. And it's a good micro cloth, too. All right, here we go. We'll put that over there. We'll put the extra hardware over there as well. All right, this is the um, Gritham Company Scout F3. And this is that titanium version. It is stone washed. Look at that clip. D deep carry. It's going to carry about like this. It'll probably push into the pocket like that. So it'll carry into the pocket like that. It'll be relatively out of sight. Pretty, pretty deep pocket. It is a front flipper. Nice titanium handles. Let's look at those screws. Those all look like T8s. Yeah, T8s, T8s all the way around. T8s there as well. Nice, nice. It's got a nice wedge on top of here. Let's check the centering real quick while we're at it. Looks pretty dead on on the centering. And look at that, maximum blade ratio. Now you do have a little extra stuff up here for this lanyard pin. You know, that's a little extra stuff. I mean, I guess that's part of the aesthetic, but eh, whatever. Gives you maybe extra handle room back there. So we do have a fuller, which is nice, and we have a front flipper. So let's see if it's tuned for the front flipper or more for the fuller. All right, here we go. All right. See the action closing? Not bad, not bad. Let's see how it reverse flick. Not bad. Okay. All right, so sometimes... Uh, all right, so that's gonna be a little tricky. This one is... I'll have to hold it up top like that to do the reverse flick, but that's fine. Okay, can do the front flip. That's pretty good. Let's see, let's check this back over here. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, so we do have a little bit of cutout relief here. We do have some chamfering on the cutout. So let's feel that. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good. And let's see, where, where's the detent? So there's the detent and it overcomes the detent about right there. And then you're clear. So I can get to about right there and I should be nice and clear, yeah. I haven't put any oil in there. I haven't tuned the, the detent on this one here. All right, so it looks like I can't really hold it low to get in there. That's going to be difficult. So this is one where you hold it up top, I think, like this. I just got to make sure I figured it out. Hmm. There we go. Something like that. But it is a front flipper, so let's see here. That works pretty well. And Ooh, there we go. Don't cut my finger. Don't do that. All right, so it's a nice flat, flat grind. Comes to a nice tip. Let's look at that. It's got a nice wedge on top there, so nice turning. Let's look at the grip. 
I got medium to medium large hands, so I've got a pretty good large hands width wise, medium length wise. I've got plenty of room here. If you're extra large, you know, double extra large, you're probably gonna use that little pinky part there, but I could choke up a little bit. You sort of could choke up, but you're, you know, it's gonna be pushing these two right there, but it would work well for a pinch grip. That'll work well. So there you go. Yeah, I mean, your hand would get in there. You could kind of choke up a little bit here. The thing is, my finger really naturally gravitates right there. So if you got meaty fingers, you're going to want to spread out, right? So I would say, you know, if you got really large hands and you're not cool about having maybe a fourth finger down here like this, this might be a little too small for you. But if you're okay with that, this is a pretty nice sized little knife here. Now I heard, I thought I'd heard this was made by Riyadh. This is made by Best Tech, according to the box, right? It said, it said it right there. It said it on the back of the box. So this is a Best Tech manufactured knife. Action's pretty good. I like that. It does drop pretty well. I think with a little bit of oil, that'll be nice. I like the fact that I can, can get my finger on there and do the front flick. I think I should be able to do it on both sides, right? Yeah. Can we do over the top? We can. Or reach around, whatever you want to call it. Just got to get over here, just get high enough. Can certainly do that. Let's see that edge. All right, let's look at that edge. Is it pretty even all the way across? Looks like it. Both sides? Yeah, that's a pretty good edge. Uh, it might be a little flat right there. It's always one side's really good, and then there's one little spot where it looks like it just kind of slips, I guess. It does have a sharpening choil. It does give you a little bit of room. It's a small sharpening choil, but it's still usable. You could choke up to this part, like I said. But you're going to be really tight here, so you're going to have to be careful with that if you're doing a push cut, right? But it does work. Nice tight grip. No sharp edges up here, which is nice, because when I do grip down, squeeze, it doesn't burn. No hot spots. I like that. Everything's nice chamfered around. There's no sharp corners around here. That's really important. Really don't want to have any sharp corners like I did on my Chavez, which I fixed. And it's not a problem, especially with stone wash. It's easy to fix on something like that. It will look just like a normal wear. This might be a little sharp, but it's not terrible. It's still been softened, so that's good. I do like that. And everything is chamfered all the way around, which is really nice. That's important. Put a little oil in there. We probably can loosen that up a little bit, or I'll probably break in pretty, pretty well. So it does flip really nicely. It's got good action. I do like that. Yeah, so over here, I'm going to have to definitely hold it up here and do the, whoop, make sure I get on there like that. That'll work. I'm not going to be able to use a clip down low on this one because I can't really get any leverage to pull that out. But I can certainly do a thumb deployment. That works. Likewise over here. Uh oh I can do a slow roll. It does stick a little bit, I guess. There you go. All right, so if my finger gets on here, that makes it next to impossible. You gotta make sure you clear it, and then it works. That's fine. All right, so it looks like the detent definitely will lock it in place. All right, let's see how it closes in on detent. Ready? Yep, no detent lash. Still pretty centered. I don't know if it went off a little bit. Yeah, okay. See any blade rock? And they're nice, nice and solid. Action's good. We'll have to see about those washers. See what we can put in there. See if that changes it at all. But so far, so good. Might just put a little oil on there and see how that goes, right? Put a little on the detent ball. Ah, I gotta make sure I figure out exactly where that finger needs to go. So this is up here. There we go. So thumb out up here like that. Okay, there we go. All right, so I believe this is, was it M390 blade steel? I think it was. Does it say on there? Yeah, it does, right there. M390, there you go. And I don't think there's, if I look back here, yeah, there's no ramp there. No, no ramp. Let's look at the lockup. We're good. Yeah, it's in there solid. Got a good angle on that tang of the blade, which is always important. Too flat and it can really get sticky. Looks like we're good. I want to say 25, 30%, maybe 25%. That's certainly fairly good. It does drop. It's not like super drop shutty, but then again, it's brand new, hasn't really been used and deployed, and the detent track hasn't really broken in, and there's no oil on that detent ball, which might really help things out quite a bit. Matter of fact, might as well just try that while we're here. 
This is Nano Oil 80 weight, and I have a little bit left in this tube. You can't even see it on there, but it is Nano Oil. This is after a lot of use, and I just, oh, I'm about to lose a drop here. Here we go. Oh, I don't want to lose that drop. Get that in there. Okay. That was a lot. It came out all by itself. That's a bummer. Okay. Let's see if we can get that on there. So sometimes what you can do is to break in the detent track, you can kind of go like that. Put a little pressure down, not, not crazy, just enough to get that track in. Go back and forth. So I do that a few times. All right, let's see how that goes. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Definitely going to keep breaking in. So that's nice. Definitely. Getting up here. Definitely works up there. Once, you, once I figure out where my thumb needs to be, fingers, it's relatively easy, as long as I know where to put my... Okay, now I have slip. There we go. So it can't be up too high. it would be down a little low here like that. There we go. Yeah. Okay, very good. I don't have any oil over here, but I was going to put a little oil maybe in there as well. Hmm. I don't know. I've got a little extra just kind of sitting on the tip here. See if we can get that to come down. Yeah, it's not coming down. That's all right. Uh, what I'll do is I'll grab my oil over there. We'll do that. Be right back. I mean, you can hear me, but I'm just grabbing the oil. I figure it'd be worth this because I don't know if I want to take this apart because the action seems pretty good. It does really, right out of the box, which is nice. So we're just going to put just a touch in there and a touch in there. Get that to work in. I think that's, we're getting close to where I want it to be. Definitely drop shuts much nicer. You can already tell. Look at that. Barely shake shut. Nice controlled. And let's listen to that. Let, let, here, let me put it next to the microphone. Ready? Kind of a nice little sound. Definitely. Let's check the inside. Yeah, we definitely got some good weight relief. You can see that. Nice cutout on both sides. Yeah, definitely. Nice backspacer, what we have back here. Yeah, definitely goes all the way down to where the two screws. So we got two screws on this side, and this screw is going to be a long screw going into a hidden pit, hidden screw on the, on the clip, which is nice. This clip looks like it's nice and round there, so that should go in and out of the pocket. I'll have to test that. Even a T8 on the uh, over travel stop uh, lock bar insert and a T8 on the pivot. Yeah, now it's starting to kind of just drop all by itself. Look at that. Yeah, it's almost there. It's almost there. It's wanting to, wanting to be drop shutty. And just a little break in, I think it's going to be right there. So I'm just kind of working it back and forth a little bit. Pushing gently, but not, not you know, put a little pressure on here. Just to get that detent ball to kind of work the track there. So if there's any sort of a bumpiness, it's trying to smooth out the track where the ball goes, right? So yeah, just a little flick and it does close by itself. Let's see, can it can it do it by itself? Will it, will it kind of travel slowly? Yeah, still still a little not quite as smooth as it will probably once it breaks in. But very nice. Very nice. I do like the size of this one. I like this in hand right here. This fits my hand really well for large hands. So large hands, definitely extra large hands. If you're okay, double extra large hands, if you're okay, having a little bit on the side, the size is really nice. It's a nice big blade, nice wedge. It doesn't, looks like it's maybe 0.12 inches 
I'm going to guess it's 0 0.12, 0 0.13, probably 0 0.12, maybe 0 0.125 or something like that. Nice thin edge. Let's see, how's it come out to a very thin edge here? Yeah, it's pretty thin. Nice flat edge all the way down. Flat grind's really nice. I do like the reverse flicking, and I do like, here, like I said, just got to make sure you don't put your fingers on that lock bar, and then the, the thumb deployment works just fine. Really nice. And of course, over the, over the front, works fine as long as you have long fingers. It's where my medium length hang fingers are. A little disadvantage because I, I can't quite reach over there. Longer fingers, you'll have an easier time to, to get like this over here and pull it back. Or me, I'm having to stretch to get over there. See? Easier for me to do a thumb and then to do the typical side where you put the little thumb right there on the side and flick it. That works really nice as well. So it gives you multiple deployment. The action's breaking in really nice. Now, just so you know, this is a first unboxing, first impressions, okay? So it's unboxing, first impressions. It's not a review. We're just kind of checking out the knife, getting our first feel of it. I like it. I like it a lot. I thought I liked the design of it a lot. It's kind of a cool shape, you know? I mean, it's similar in a way. It reminds me a little bit of the drift, but not. It has some drift kind of feels to it, but definitely a little nice curves here as well. I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, this is really cool. Definitely a neat little knife. I do like that a lot. I was glad to get in on this one. Now they had to, you know, one that had the carbon fiber insert, but I like the straight up titanium, personally. To me, this looked more appealing for what I wanted, right? All right, so we just get, make sure we get the thumb up there and we're up there. So thumb up there and get up there, yeah. So make sure thumb's got up there and you have no problem flicking it. So this is where you, oops, make sure I get up there. So lefties probably know about this all the time. Just gonna make sure you get the right angle. Oops. All right, my fingers are getting tired. <laughs> it's not my normal way of reverse flicking. It's, it's a little difficult, because you have to really grip it certain ways. Let's see if I rest it up enough. Yeah, there we go. Fingers are getting a little tired doing it over and over, whereas some other things are a little easier for me. There we go. Will it do it without shaking? I have to do a little bit of shake. Will it keep going? Not quite. Got a little shake, but it's pretty smooth. I know if I do a little drop there, it'll go all the way. Once it gets some momentum, it'll certainly close. See? That's really nice. I want to hear real quick. Not a whole lot of grittiness to it. A lot of times that's with the, the ceramic balls. And that's where skiff washers might come in. I bet if I put skiffs in there, this is going to be ridiculously butter smooth. And I might just go ahead and do that. That might be another video. And the reason why I say that is because I don't think I need to tune it. But I will tell you, it feels like it. the detent ball is a little strong. It may be, it's not real strong, but for that front flipper, I mean, it's really nice. It works well, but it is just a, a hair for my like for a front flipper. Okay, so if I want this to be primarily a front flipper, I might want it just a touch, a touch, very, very, very small touch lighter. Uh, most people probably wouldn't even notice, but I can. The reverse flick works well, but I think the front flipper is really gonna be the most enjoyable for this one. Yeah, especially be able to do that. And the problem is when you do that, and it, if it's just hard enough, it starts to get make this a little raw, right? And if, if it's just got the right detent, as far as I'm concerned, for me, then it's not, it doesn't rip up my, my inside of my finger like that. And this part is a little bit easier. And then it's also easier to kind of flick and roll like that. And makes this a little lighter, but right now, I mean, with the way it is, that middle finger reverse flick is really, really nice. And it works great on the right-handed side. The problem with it being just a little bit stronger, it does take a little extra force to get past that. So the reverse flick with a little stronger detent makes that a little more challenging. If it just was just a little bit lighter, that might be just a hair easier. And it's just minuscule. And I'm only going by other experiences with other knives that I have that I've enjoyed. But I do like this. I do like this a lot. It's really cool. All right, so that's my first impression. If you guys have any questions about this, well, let's do it. Let's do it before we do that. Let me give you some up close shots of it because I'm sure you'd like to see this. You can see what, what, what the two screws and the swedge and the blade, the front flipper. Here, let's do the one handed presentation so you can get a better view. There we go. Here, we'll do the like that. 
What do you think? Nice. We'll do the back. Take a look here. You can see the clip right there with the nice roundedness. Then you can see the jimping on here. So the jimping here works really nice too. So if you had to do a push cut, you do have a little texture here for a push cut. If you're like cutting into some really hard cardboard and you're trying to push through it, that definitely will work. You now if you're doing a pull cut, you definitely have a little place to put the meat of your thumb right there, or meat of your hand between your thumb and your finger to pull back. So that'll work as well. Like if you're cutting a rope or something, that works really nice. I do like that a lot. See if I can do that. Yeah, I can get it. It's just not as easy going over the top like that. I feel like it, it's, you know, if I left it, I feel like probably after a few months, maybe half a year, it would be what I would want it to be at. But that would be after, you know, a lot of wear and tear and stuff like that. But I might not carry it as much if it's more challenging to do because it hasn't broken in as nicely. But man, it's close. It's really, really, really close. It's so close. It's almost perfect, but it's just not quite there for that front flip. And I could say I can do it, right? I don't look like I have any trouble doing it. The problem is I can feel it ripping. And uh, this is a really nice jimping, by the way. This is not super aggressive. It's not going to, you know, pocket shredder, skin shredder. It definitely keeps your hands secure. You're not going to slide off. But it's not like it's going to just scrape skin off. It's just really nice jimping. It's got some texture to it, but not too much, not too little. So I like that. But the problem is... It's just enough resistance that's going to make that raw. And I think it's going to be so slight. Might, I might not even notice it, but just enough to, you know, maybe just a hair, I think, is the, the case. It's not it's certainly not going to be a whole lot. So let's see if we can get this again. Yeah, that's going to be challenging. Getting past that. There we go. Yeah, that's it. This is the Griffin Company, the Scout F3. Nice little knife. I do like this a lot. If you have any questions about the knife, the unboxing, and maybe the future review, would you please let me know? Yeah, I would love to hear about it. And any questions to me or, or to the channel, I would love to hear about it in the comments. I do try to reply to all of them, and I do appreciate it. Uh, if you have any ideas for future Rob's ramblings, please feel free to share as well. Any questions for me? Feel free to ask. I'm more than happy to answer. I do, like I said, try to reply. Uh, hey, thanks so much for watching this review today. I really appreciate it. If you found this uh, review, sorry, unboxing, I keep doing that, review slash unboxing. If, if you found this fun, interesting, worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you consider hitting the subscribe button as well? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel, allows the channel to grow, be able to produce more content, do more things. I very much appreciate that. And if you've done all that, maybe consider hitting your notification button so you can be notified of future content when it's dropped. And if you've done all that, maybe check me out over on Instagram. At, again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Hey, thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.